of the September 11th Memorial Museum opens to the public this week in Lower Manhattan, and some conspiracy theorists, who are apparently no strangers to Photoshop, plan on attending. According to the Village Voice newspaper, which broke the story, the conspiracy group Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth plan on standing outside the entrance on opening day to hand out fake museum brochures designed to look exactly like the real ones. Take a look. On the left side of your screen, the real deals. On the right, the group's handiwork. Welcome to the other story about 9-11. That's, of course, the false one. This is Ogodowski of WeAreChange.org. I am here with the one and only Richard Gage of Architects and Engineers. Now, Richard made a lot of news last week when you made a flyer that was very uh, similar to the flyer that this 9-11 corporate museum was given out be, uh, behind us. Um, you got a lot of media attention, but can you tell us why did you decide to make a very similar flyer that the 9-11 museum uh, was giving out? Well, we noticed that the official museum flyer had no information about the controlled demolition of these three skyscrapers. Inside, they claim they've compiled, quote, a vast amount of evidence, I'm using the term loosely there, proving, that's their word, not ours, that all three World Trade Center skyscrapers were deliberately destroyed by explosives on 9-11. Yeah. Well, we noticed that it had no information about the nanothermite found in the World Trade Center dust or the free fall of World Trade Center 7 uh, symmetrically into its own footprint the afternoon of 9-11 due to, quote, normal office fires. Of course, they don't actually prove anything except for man's capacity for believing crazy things. In uh, a sense of sacredness, actually a pathological sacredness that, um, that, that, that keeps people from even being willing or able uh, to ask these very serious questions anymore. So we're yes. very concerned. And man's insensitivity to, for instance, the families of the approximately 3,000 people killed. Seeing the mainstream media say that you're a conspiracy theorist, that you're just making things up. In New York, the Pentagon, and in a field in Pennsylvania, by Islamic terrorists with al-Qaeda, as every credible investigation has actually proven. Why it's not a conspiracy theory to you? We're just talking about scientific forensic evidence, eyewitness testimony, video evidence. Emily, we are more than a decade after the tragedy of 9-11. Why do these truthers have such staying power? It's such a good question, the persistence of this theory. You know, usually with a conspiracy theory, you imagine that people are trying to make sense of the senseless. But with 9-11, we have a real conspiracy called Al-Qaeda. Uh, so I don't know why everybody, not everybody, but the mainstream media and those people who just don't want to exercise their brain cells to look at the evidence, it's just so much easier, I think, for them to stay in denial, stay in their well-defined box. And so... One has to imagine that the anti-government motivation of the 9-11 truthers is really what's driving this. Because if you could imagine that the, nine, that the government made up 9-11 as a hoax, then the government is completely monstrous. There's no reason to believe anything any federal official says and certainly no reason to pay your taxes. Has the official story understood uh, but can't deal yeah. with the scientific forensic evidence? So we turn their world upside down when they really start listening. And, and what happens when this kind of nonsense hits the echo chamber of the Internet? Well, it tends to multiply online, and you see these dark corners of the Internet where people pile on, and there's this very minute parsing of the technicalities of the supposed evidence. Well, we now have 2,100 architects and engineers demanding a real investigation of the destruction of all three of these World Trade Center skyscrapers. Uh, these are technical and building professionals. They don't have conspiracy theories. I don't have conspiracy theories. What we do have is a host of evidence. I mean, we're talking about high-rise architects, structural engineers, metallurgists, chemists, physicists, controlled demolitions experts all gathered onto one place, the video, the DVD, 9-11 explosive evidence experts speak out, where all this evidence is laid out. And more and more de detail gets added and accumulated, and it kind of feeds on itself. And the idea here, right, is not just that the three buildings were uh, destroyed by explosives, that it's all part of this grand conspiracy where the U.S. government, I mean, and let, me, and let me state, if I haven't made it clear enough, none of this is true. This is all just crazy talk, but that the U.S. government f faked it, killed all these people intentionally, uh, and it was just to, to start a war in Iraq and another one in Afghanistan. Is that, is that the, 
the idea that they're going for here? And people just can't refute it. It's really irrefutable. Yeah. That's the idea, and just to state it is to show how horrifying it is. I suppose that given that the American government did put forward some false ideas to motivate uh, going into Iraq, in particular the whole idea that there were weapons of mass destruction there, that's like the tiny, tiny kernel of truth that is in some way related to this completely crazy theory. And there's also a lot of scapegoating involved in the 9-11 truth or stuff. There's, there's anti-Semitism, anti anti-Israel, uh, anti-corporations, right? Now, you not only bring together architects and engineers in this shield, but also survivors, family members, rescue workers, a lot of people who are affected, like Janet McKinley, who, uh, you know, rest in peace. Exactly. And I think you see these virulent strains that are related to each other and familiar from fringe right-wing talk. And they all get kind of weirdly braided together in this particular theory. And histor historically, we, we see that these conspiracies come after very upsetting events, the Kennedy assassination, the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. Is there a pattern there? He said that anybody questioning the official events is crazy, is delusional, uh, and is not in their right mind. What, what response do you have to Jake Tapper? That is the problem. Um, we can't ask questions anymore. Ben Franklin said it's our patriotic duty to ask questions. And it's the duty of the government and the media to ask questions and to provide answers. We're asking real questions, but instead of looking at the questions we're asking, instead of looking at the evidence that we're offering, that we have questions about, we're being labeled conspiracy theorists. I think that each time something really scary and disastrous happens, people search for meaning. And then sometimes, even when there is a clear explanation, because we have that for 9-11 in a way that we didn't for the Kennedy assassination, certainly at first, when then you have this search for, for supposed other evidence out there and people just kind of pick it up and run with it, even when it seems completely unwarranted. We, we have scientific forensic evidence that begs the question uh, how really did these towers came, come down? They couldn't have come down due to jet plane impacts and jet fuel and, and gravitational collapse because of the evidence of thermite, the evidence of pulverized concrete, the evidence of molten iron, the evidence of uh, thermite in, in small iron microspheres, and the evidence of the videos just themselves coming down at 12 seconds near free fall acceleration, straight down, and then an incredible geometry of fireworks, outward, laterally ejected, freely flying structural steel sections. Yeah. So if you could say anything to Jake Tapper, what would it be right now? <laughs> Put you on the spot there. Yeah. Uh, Jake, uh, I agree with uh, Rudy Dent of the Fire Department of New York. You need a real job. Uh, get yourself some integrity. Uh, go and, and work at McDonald's. You'll have a lot more integrity there. We need people at CNN who are going to ask questions, who are going to demand answers. Uh, we need people who don't parrot the official line, who don't mock their interviewees uh, by calling them all different kinds of names without even looking at what they're saying.